Welcome back to Thrive, your agency resource. Today we're talking about what makes a relationship. Really, really interesting topic. And my guest and good friend is Joe Apfelbaum, founder and CEO of Ajax Union, which is a B2B sales firm focused mostly on LinkedIn strategies. He's authored uh, several books. Uh, he's also a passionate rapper, uh, always puts a smile on my face. And Joe, welcome to the show. I'm so excited to have you here today. Thank you so much for having me. I'm so excited. Today on, on LinkedIn, I posted a, a photo of me eight years ago when I went to my first networking event ever. <laughs> <laughs> That's great. It's so great to look back at those things, right? Yeah. And Facebook reminds me it's really easy. But so I posted a picture of me and Elmo. <laughs> People were like, what is this picture of this fat guy with Elmo? I was like, listen, I was 265 pounds. I didn't know I was a fat guy at the time. <laughs> <laughs> but I definitely had no idea how to network at that point. And I, it was just insane how far I've come in terms of going from being a transactional person to being a relationship-based person. So yeah, yeah. I'm so glad and, that I'm here to discuss that. Yeah, and, and so that's a, a great segue for what I wanted to start with, which is actually a little bit about your background, how you grew up, and how those experiences sort of um, led you to growing what you call it a, a transactional agency, um, 150 employees, 1,100 clients, and then where you are today, which is completely different. Yeah. So when I started my company, I, w I wasn't a business person, right? I was kind of like a, a tech guy. I, I built websites. I was an SEO guy. I was a uh, my mother used to call me touchy touch because <laughs> I like to touch everything. I just, I just like to like reverse engineer and tinker and tear apart the computer and build it back together. And I just yeah. love the process of doing that. I didn't really ever really do it for the money. Of course, I wanted to make money. I didn't come from a financially wealthy or abundant family. So I was always trying to figure out, okay, how can I hustle? How can I buy stuff on Craigslist, sell it on eBay? How could I just find ways to make money? And what I found was people used to say, if you build it, they will come. You ever heard that saying? If you build yeah, it, they will it's come. True. It's not true. They don't come when you build it. <laughs> you can build it from today to tomorrow. No one will come. You have to learn how to market it. So I built a lot of websites for people. And then they said, okay, do SEO. And then I found this idea called reoccurring revenue. Whereas, you know, just building a website, it's, you know, a few thousand bucks. But then if you can do SEO for them, they pay you a few thousand bucks a month. Um, so I said, you know what? I want to help small business owners. I did some research. I found that there were a million, uh, 34 million businesses in the United States. I said, I want all of them as customers. That's when I started. I was like, I want all of them, every single one, even the grumpy ones. I will change them. I will change the world. I think I've heard this story before. <laughs> <laughs> Anyway, so I set out and I said, okay, in the first year, we're going to hit a thousand clients. We said I did not hit a thousand clients in the first year. I got five clients when I started out, but then after that, we were getting about 10 clients a month and 20 clients a month. And eventually we built up a team to be able to close 50 new deals a month. The problem was that we were also losing 50 clients a month. So we were having this churn, I think it was like an eight month average ARPU. And we were trying to figure out, okay, what's going on? Why are people not staying with us? Is it because our service is not great? But over 90% of people loved our service. So the question is, what, was, what were we doing wrong? And the answer was we were targeting the wrong people because the average business will go out of business within three years. Mm -hmm. Most businesses will go out of business within three years. So we, were, we had that demographic, people that were super hungry, super ready to go, and they wanted SEO to build a long-term business, a long-term strategy is for a long-term business, but they were thinking, how can I get rich quick in my business? And they weren't profitable, they weren't successful, they weren't strategic, they weren't process-oriented, they weren't developed. And as a result, they would go out of business and try the next shiny thing. You know, the average entrepreneur has a seven-year itch, these people had the seven minute itch. And so <laughs> they kept doing it over and over and over. And so, you know, what I had to really look at myself, look back at myself and ask myself, okay, what am I even doing here? What am I doing? Am I going to spin my wheels forever? Or do I want to get to the next level? We were on the Inc. 5000. We were number 178 in 2012. We, we did half a million, a million, two million, four million. We grew very quickly. But then at some point, growing really quickly, it was kind of like my weight. I was gaining 10 pounds every single year. I became a balloon at 265 pounds. That's not sustainable. I can't just eat whatever I want. And so I had to learn how to create systems and processes in a business, how to figure out, okay, what do I even want for myself? What do I want to create? Why am I in business to begin with? Am I in business to get to 10 million in revenue and lose a million dollars a year? Right. Like some of my clients were, right. or do I want to be able to feed my family, make a really good living and live a life of purpose? So I had to hire coaches, consultants, mentors. I joined entrepreneurs organization. I joined Vistage. I joined a bunch of other groups and I started learning from the CEOs that they were moving a lot slower. 
they were moving a lot slower. And what I realized is that long-term, slow and steady wins the race. And my partner always used to say to me, but I'm a fast talker. I'm a New Yorker, right? I like moving fast, 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 fast food. Let's get it all done. Fast, fast, fast. Come on, come on. Before they even serve the food, I ate it already. So that's the idea. So what I want to do is I got to slow down. And so when you're slowing down, you can't move too slow because then you're just stuck. You become a rock. You got to consistently move, but you got to have the balance between the yin and the yang of, of quality and quantity. And the same thing with my network, having the balance between quality and quantity. And now I have a transformational relationship with my employees. I used to not like my employees. I love my employees. I used to not like my clients. I love my clients. I used to not like my business and my life. I love my business and I love my life. So it's a whole different ballgame waking up in the morning now. Right, right. And how, how amazing is that? And how good does that feel to even just say that out loud? Like, I love my business. I love what I do for a living. And I love my life. Those are really powerful words. It's very powerful. And not only is it powerful, it's freeing, emotionally freeing. Because I used to feel stuck. I used to, you know, I used to believe in my business and not in myself. Hmm. Ah, that rings a bell. And now I believe in my business because I believe in myself. Right, right. It's a whole different ballgame. Whole different mindset. Absolutely. So I, I feel like right now I'm in a, in a, a growth mindset, in an abundance mindset. I, I give a lot of clients to a lot of the people around me, even some of them that might think they're competitors. There are no competitors because my competitive advantage is me. You cannot you cannot have like the competitive advantage is me and the processes that I create, the systems that I create, the reputation that we have that no one else, like the client, I used to think, let me tell you something crazy. I used to think that if somebody would look at my LinkedIn contacts, hmm. they would steal all of them. I thought if somebody would look at my CRM, they would steal all my clients and I wouldn't be able, and all my prospects and it wouldn't be enough for me. Right. Now I'm like, these are my clients. These are my prospects. Tell me who you need. Tell me who you want to speak to. If a client wants to leave because you're better than me, then you deserve the damn client. Right, right, <laughs> right. Well, it's, it's also the mindset about giving and supporting other people as the first priority, and then you know it will come back to you. And that, that is, a, I mean, I think when you have that competitive fear-based mindset, it's like, you know, army army cadets when they're sitting at the mess hall and they're like guarding their plate because they don't want anybody to touch their food right that's like that's a different mindset than i'm willing to share and eventually people will remember that i shared and they'll come and just share with me all the time so I used, yeah and i used to think that energy comes from food <laughs> energy doesn't come from food i thought successful businesses have to have lots and lots of revenue no successful businesses have to have a lot of profit and a lot of cash right. a lot of profit and a lot of cash not a lot of revenue. You don't have to have hundreds of millions of dollars to make millions of dollars in profit. You just right. have to be smart about it. Right. So, right. you know, that's the idea. So um, talking about relationships specifically, why do we need to create deeper, more meaningful relationships with those that we engage with, um, whether it's in business or even in life? Because I know you, you talk about both very fluidly. Yeah. So if you think about relationships in general, like what's the purpose of a relationship? Like why do we even need relationships? We are social creatures by nature. That's what human beings are. And we need to connect and Ultimate fulfillment comes from contributing to others. That is the mm -hmm. ultimate fulfillment. So you can have achievement from today to tomorrow. You could be a billionaire on your 16th wife. I don't care. Or on your 16th husband. I don't care. But if, you, if your life sucks and you hate the people around you and you hate yourself, I don't care how much money you have. I don't care what you've achieved in your life. That's not a life worth living. And each one of us eventually is going to die. So the question is, what really matters in our life is the quality and the quantity, the depth of the relationships that we have, that we make. Everything that I do in my life, I do for my relationships, yeah. right? I do for my kids. I do for my parents, for my siblings, for my community. I do for my employees. I do for my clients. If all the people didn't exist and I was alone in an island, I wouldn't have to do anything. I would just eat coconuts and wrap. That's right. what I would do. <laughs> <laughs> Instead of eating coconuts, I go crazy for coconuts, crazy for Cocoa Puffs. I think maybe that's how they say, crazy for coconuts. Anyway, so the bottom line is <laughs> what you have to do is realize that if relationships are important to you and they're important to your business and they're important to your emotional well-being, and by the way, I spoke to a neurosurgeon and he said that one of the ways to avoid dementia or to push dementia 
is to be social and have meaningful relationships. Besides learning a new language, like I'm learning Chinese, ni hao, ding ding hao. So that's the idea. The, the idea is learning, learning and creating and building and being social. And here's another thing that's super powerful that a lot of people don't think about, self-expression. This whole idea of self-expression that a lot of people are afraid to express themselves because they might, get, um, they might get pushed away, they might get rejected, they might not get loved by the relationships. When you have meaningful relationships that you love and they love you, mm. you can be like your best friend and be fully expressed. Like me and you, Kelly, we're best friends. And we don't know each other for many, many years. Yeah. But I am able to be so open, so raw, so vulnerable, so connected with you. And you see that. And that's why you love being with me. And Absolutely. that's why you love spending time with me. And that's what makes money. By adding value to other people and connecting that way, people get to know you. Yeah. People get to trust you. And then people get to like you because they are like you because they're mirroring you. That's right. the power. Man, I, I'm not even kidding. I'm sitting here and I literally have goosebumps. That was... So spot on. I couldn't have said that better myself. Uh, thank you. Thank you. Thank um, you. So, so being at, at Ajax Union, you focus on LinkedIn strategies, but it's really about connecting and creating these relationships. So can you talk a little bit about how you do that? I know you have sort of a, a framework for three different qualifiers um, from a networking perspective. And I'd love to kind of talk about that because I think it's really interesting how you pare down and drill down and sort of funnel the quality versus the quantity in your network and, and on LinkedIn. The average CEO has 930 connections on LinkedIn. There are 610 million people. The max amount of connections you can have on LinkedIn is 30,000, but you can't have 30,000 relationships. So how do you identify the 100 people, the 200 people, the 500 people that you want to have deep, meaningful, mutually beneficial win-win relationships? So I say, take all your relationships that you have right now and analyze them. Most people don't create awareness you know, they're busy doing things, they're busy executing, but they don't have strategy. But before strategy, you got to have awareness. So awareness means recognize. Who do you know? Who do rec So I say recognize, strategize, then prioritize. So recognize is step number one. Who do you know? Which names do you even recognize? Because if you don't recognize the name, you don't have a relationship with the person. Just because you're connected to somebody and you've been hurting connections, stop hoarding connections. Stop hurting and hoarding connections. Instead, start building relationships with the people that you already know first. So step number one is who do you know? So go through all the names and identify who you recognize as a content. Have you met them? Have you spoken to them? Do you have a mutual contact? How well do you know them? So step number one is recognize. Step number two is strategize. Do I want to get to know this person? Do they seem like they'd be an interesting to you? Would they could be a client? Could they be a referral? Could they be a partner? Could they be an affiliate? Could they be a lover? Who, like, what is this? Could this person be somebody that could be meaningful to you in your life that could love your content that you want to get to know in a deeper way? So do you want to get to know this person? Are they strategic for your life and for your business? And most of the time, the answer is going to be no. Out of the 610 million people, most of millions, hundreds of millions are going to be no, because if, you know, there's, let's say 50 million people in the UK or in France that don't even speak English, that's not going to help you because you can't even communicate with them unless, of course, you're from France and you speak French and, you know, like, so identifying your target market is really important and strategizing is a second. So being strategic about your relationships. And the third step is, is this person real? Is this person real? When you send a message to somebody, are they real? Are they a fan of your content? Do they engage with you in some way? Are they the type of person that's just a real... So for you, a real person is the same as what it is for me. Mm -hmm. But for somebody else, a real person might be a person that separates business and, and pleasure. They might say, business is business. And I don't want to deal with a person that says business is business because that means that person's trying to make an excuse to treat me badly in the name of business. And I don't want that. I want business to be personal. Right. And I want you to connect with me deeply. And that's the type of relationship that I want. I want real relationships that I can go deep with, that I can be myself with. So is this a real relationship? Is this my type of relationship? Is this a value-based relationship? Is this a person that I would want to have lunch with, have drinks with? Is this a person I want to go out to dinner with? So what is the priority that this person plays in my life based on their communication level, based on who they are, based on what their likes are, their interests, and whether or not I would resonate with them? So if you take the recognize, strategize, and prioritize process, that three-step process of awareness, strategy, and then execution or then accountability, then you're going to know how to be able to segment your list and prioritize the context that will actually help you be able to create a greater contribution in your network and ultimately get more referrals, get more clients, have more fun. Can you imagine if you had all your contacts that you prioritize to have 
to, to go out with and have fun with and connect with, they were all your best friends. They were all people that you wanted to spend endless amounts of time, that you wanted to be on their podcast, that you wanted to love on, that life would be heaven. Instead of having yeah. a bunch of trolls hanging around crapping on you like I did with the clients that I had in the past, right. now right. my clients, I love, I love, 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 love. I love my referral partners. You know, I, there was once a guy who got, re, who was a, a terrible client and he got so angry. He's like, Joe, I'm never going to refer business to you. And I got so depressed, so sad. And I was like, oh, 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 my heart started hurting so much. I can't believe he's going to make me fail. This guy's going to make me fail. And then, I, and then a coach told me, he's like, Joe, why does it hurt you so much? He's like, because I want to succeed. He's like, if this guy referred business to you, people, people refer business uh, that are like them. Right, equal refer to or lesser, to, lesser than them. Right, so yeah. you're going to get a crappier client from the crappiest client. Like, thank the guy. Send him a thank you gift for not sending you <laughs> referrals. Oh, that's a good one. I like that. <laughs> so, that's, yeah. so that's like, that was like mind blowing for me because now I'm like, wow, Wow. And, so, and, and you know what? You know, it's a red flag for me when somebody says, if you give me a discount, I'll send you referrals. I, I don't do That's that. the biggest yeah. red flag ever. I pull out the big red flag and I start waving it. I'm like, <laughs> do not take this client on. <laughs> yeah. I love it. I love it. So would you say that there's one sort of keystone takeaway um, that you have for other agency leaders that are watching or listening? Um, just that, that they should start to impart in their own uh, lives, businesses, or just the way that they approach relationships or, or networking? If you want to be successful, you got to be tracking. You can't just be attacking. And you might say, Joe, cut me some slack in this room and I'll just say, boom. You know why? Because you need to have a process. You need to know your process. What, so agency owner, listen to me. What is your step-by-step -step process for building relationships? For me, it's recognize, strategize, and prioritize. How often do you touch base with the people that love you and that you love? How many people do you actually have that you know, that you trust, and that you like, and that they know you, they trust you, and they like you? Break it down. Review your context. You're moving too fast. No matter how fast you're chewing, you're chewing too fast. So put your forking fork down. <laughs> chill out for a minute. Take a deep breath. Drink some water because a 5% drop in hydration is a 30% drop in energy. Take a chill pill, take a deep breath and realize that you have the rest of your life to live. Right. So connect deeply, love on your relationships. You know, I often tell people there are three ways to connect with someone and to get a meeting. Greeting, feeding, and then meeting. Most people go straight to meeting and get rejected. Mm -hmm. First start with greeting. Hi, thank you. Nice to meet you. So good to get to know you. Happy spring, whatever. Start with the greeting. Then get into feeding. Kelly, you're such a marvelous, incredible agency coach. You've been able to help so many people. I'm so impressed by your profile on LinkedIn. I'm so impressed that you sold your agency. I'm so impressed that you made a difference for other people. Feed, 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 feed. Thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you. Appreciate, appreciate, appreciate. And then go for the meeting. Then get on the podcast. Then have lunch, dinner, breakfast, drinks. Then go to the Caribbean islands and go crazy. <laughs> Well, it's, it's, a, it's a process. It's like courting, right? Like you wouldn't go on a first date and propose. And that's kind of the analogy that I always use is that relationships and deep, meaningful relationships take time. And like you said before, it's about slowing down. It's not about how many LinkedIn connections can I have. Um, you know, I've had been on LinkedIn since the very beginning, and I think I only have maybe like 2000 connections. I have other connections that have 25,000, 30,000. And I'm like, what does that really say? What does that really mean? You know, is it just to be able to say that I'm like this uh, rock star connector, but are you really connecting when you have that many quote unquote relationships? Cause they're not relationships and we have to be honest with ourselves about that. They're just connections. And let me tell you some just sales, connections. just tell you some sales statistics, just so you know, 48% of salespeople mm -hmm. never follow up with a prospect. And this is even in networking. Most people don't follow up. I go to a lot of networking events. Most people never follow up. 25% of salespeople make a second contact and then stop. 12% of salespeople only make three contacts and then stop. So that means that, means that over 80 or 90% of people are not making more than three contacts. I would say only 10% of salespeople are making more than three contacts and the same thing with networking. But only 2% of sales are made on the first contact, 3% of sales are made on the second contact, and 80% of sales are made on the fifth to the 12th contact. 
80% of your referrals are going to come from the network that you've been in touch with a dozen or two dozen times and you've built meaningful relationships. I know this because I've done this. The deals that I get that are $10,000 a month retainers, that are $20,000 a month retainers for lead generation, for sales enablement, for the stuff that we do for the B2B companies, they come from people that I've known for five years, for six years, for seven years, and that I've had lunch with every single year like multiple times that know me, that trust me, that see me over and over. And they come from random places. You know, that is, that is the reality of it. Most people are not, somebody said networking doesn't work. I said, how many introductions did you make in the past six months? He said, I made three introductions. I said, I made a thousand introductions. It's not that networking doesn't work. You don't work. Right. So he's right. like, holy crap, I don't work. You're not giving. You're not giving. You're not Put doing it out there. that number one thing, which is a priority. Um, so... I said it at the top of the show. I have to ask, are you going to do a little rap for us today? Of course I'm going to do a little rap ah, for I love today. You. My name is Joe and I'm the social selling pro. I teach LinkedIn so you make dough. This is how we go. This is how we flow. Let's start the show so you can grow. Now bye to the lurkers, hi to the workers, ride like a surfer, click on the cursor. You open an account and you don't know what to do. You're looking through your feed and you're looking for your crew. Where is Kelly? Where is Gilbert? Where are my peeps? <laughs> But you haven't been connecting to all those connections that you have been collecting to all those fears that you have been protecting to all those results that you have been expecting. Let me be direct. Learn how to connect instead of expect. It's a networking effect. The value that you add to this guy named Brad, to your sister's dad, it'll make you glad. Going viral is a fad. Instead, introduce him to your pad. You won't be mad. You won't be sad. But you didn't do the work. You're acting like a clerk in the post office office like an order taker you want to be a mover you want to be a shaker start to learn how to be a rainmaker listen to thrive and start to be alive because kelly is the bomb can i get a boom in the comments give me a boom boom <laughs> boom joe thank you so much you make my day every single time we talk every time i hear you rap it just it lights up every every part of me so Thank you for being on the show today. I appreciate your time and you have a great day. Thank you so much. Boom. This episode has been brought to you by Workamajig, the number one creative agency management software. Show notes at thrive.workamajig.com. Find out how your creative agency can become more productive and more profitable. Schedule your demo at thrive.workamajig.com.